everyone. Uh, this is Cheryl. And this month, Coco Daisy had a watercolor theme. It's fresh flowers with Good morning, everyone. Hi, everyone. This is Cheryl. And this month's release with for the March Planner Kit was called Fresh Cut. And they had water, it was a watercolor theme, watercolor florals. And in one of the kits were watercolors. And I realize a lot of you don't have a lot of experience with watercolors. So I thought I would do just a basic tutorial on using watercolors. And in your kit, you would have received a watercolor brush. It would have been this one, actually. And one of the first things you need to do, besides take it out of the package, is open it up. And you'll see this little cavity. You want to fill that up with water. And this will hold the water within your brush so that when you squeeze it, it'll push out the water. And then that way you can actually use your brush without a watercolor cup. Um, in your paint set, you also got a watercolor brush um, that you will need to use with a cup of water. I always have a cloth with me too to wipe up all the excess and then I like to clean my brush off with. And then I like to have a palette to mix my colors on. The other thing is if you're going to use it with stamps, you wanna use an archival ink stamp pad because if you use a watercolor or ink that has watercolor base, it will blend with your watercolors and you'll get a mess. So first, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use some watercolor paper that I have. Um, there are different types. There is, you can use a mixed media pad, which is great for um, doing any kind of mixed media art. Or you can use cold press, which you'll see has more of a texture. There is also what's called a hot press watercolor paper that is very smooth. And I have some of that right here. And you'll see on that, that it really doesn't have any texture. This is great when you wanna do sketching on it. And then that way you can sketch and you're not gonna have a texture. Now something to keep in mind that when you use water with pencil, um, once you've colored on it, you can't erase, like here I wrote, thankful. You can't erase your pencil mark once it's been activated with the water. So what I want to do here Okay, so you want to use archival ink. The archival ink is not water-based and because it's not water-based it's not going to mix with the water of your ink, of your paints. And that's a good thing because if you did this with your dye-based ink, you will end up with a mess. Now, one thing when you stamp, make sure that you're not rocking this back and forth because you'll end up with a blurred image. Okay, I like squirrel brushes. They are, and these are the oval mops. So like this one here is a number one. Um, this is a number four, it's a little bit thinner. What I'm going to do is, for, I'm gonna use the one that you got in your kit. I'm gonna make sure that it's got the water. And because it's March, let's stick with the greens and maybe some turquoise. And I want to blend these colors. Okay, 
And remember when you're using watercolors, you want them to be a little transparent. You're not coloring it in with crayons or with pencils or markers where it's really thick and dark. You want them to be a little transparent. Like a soft wash. So as I'm going across the title, you'll see it's getting a little lighter. So I wanted to pick up a little bit more of the green. Let's see if you can see that. Make sure I'm holding it under the camera. Okay, let's add some flowers in here. And let's do. So make sure that you always have a spray bottle. You want to activate your paints. And remember your depth of field. So, like your back pedal is going to be your darker pedal. A little too wet. Put a little more color in here. And then we'll do, we're going to come forward. And these are a little bit wet, but. And as we come forward, It's okay, you want to leave some spots of white because then you can add other color in there and that's basically highlighting. It's like the sun hitting it, adding some light. Now with the mop brushes, you can use techniques to create your petals using those. A little different with a water brush. And I, I always turn my pages, my paper around, to get the angles I want. I want to add a little highlight of yellow in here before the um, water soaks in. So you can see that it's spreading because the paper, there's still a lot of water in here to absorb it into the paper. Let's throw one more flower in here. I always do things in threes or odd numbers. Throw a little bit of yellow in here. Just a little. Okay. Now we're going to give this a second to to soak up some of that water. And it's not quite dry yet, but I want to add a little green in the center. And then the stem. Okay, maybe some ground. Let's ground it. put a leaf in here. You can see I'm used to using my cup of water.
need that anyway to clean it. Now the other thing you can do once this is completely dry is go back with a very fine tip black point pen and draw in, I think I have some oh, here on this one. And you can go back in and draw in your details. This one's not quite finished, but you can see how you go in and you do your pen work. And this one has very little detail work, but it didn't really need it. The other thing to keep in mind when you're watercoloring is to do, let's see, this is in my Hobonichi. So and you can color, you can watercolor in a Hobonichi. Do your color well. So these are your cool color. Well, actually, technically, these are your cool colors. These are your warm colors. So when you're coloring, you rarely want to mix um, certain colors together because usually you keep your cool colors separate from your warm colors when you're painting. Because to mix your cool and your your warm, you can create mud. But obviously, some colors do really well together. Like I like to mix my, um, well, my greens and my yellows and my blues always do really well together. But if you mix your red and your blue, you're gonna get purple. And you know, just remember, remember what you learned in kindergarten with your color wheel. Your, your primary colors, your secondary colors, and your tertiary colors. And that will always keep you on the right track with mixing your colors. Else, I want you to learn um, the right papers. You can color, you can paint in your Coco Daisy book. It does take the paint fairly well. One thing to keep in mind though is uh, don't add too much water because it will make the, the paper pill up literally by creating little pills um, like your sweater does over time. So just keep that you know, easy. And I will um, have a blog post to go with this and we'll explain everything um, there too. So if you have any questions, make sure you tag me in the Facebook group and I'll be more than happy to help you. Thank you.